I'm Carrie Alberto, and I've built my practice my way. My name is Carrie, and I am the owner of Poor Wealth Management. Being a financial advisor was actually my first job at a college, and it was at the recommendation of my then girlfriend, now wife, to go to a presentation about being a financial advisor. And once I went uh, and learned about how it's working with numbers, which appealed to me with my business degree, but also working with people, I was pretty much hooked from then on. So originally when I got out of college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew what I did not want to do. And I thought I didn't want to do sales. I didn't want to be a business owner. I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. And that's pretty much what I wound up doing. And for myself, um, I was so attracted to just the actual day-to-day -day work of being a financial planner that that was the carrot for me. Um, the carrot for me was if I wanted to work with clients in a way that I thought they should be worked with, that they should be guided, um, then I had to be my own boss. So that's how I kind of fell into it. I would not consider myself a stereotypical advisor um, in fact, I joke that if I wasn't my own boss, I would be a great diversity hire because I'm young, female, Hispanic, part of the LGBTQ community. Uh, so I check all the boxes, but I love that. Um, I think my clients, they don't see me as an atypical advisor, but they reap the benefits of having someone with so many varied experiences kind of packaged in this motivated advisor. I was really fortunate that about 10 years ago, um, I was introduced to another LPL advisor who uh, needed some help with his own clients and was also in the latter stage of, of his career. So I did kind of a hybrid where I um, managed my own practice, but then worked with his clients as well. And we did that for eight years. And then uh, two years ago, I bought the business. And that was as seamless as it could be because I had already been working with the clients for eight years. So um, it was a really easy transition. And it, and it worked for me as someone who, like I said, didn't really want to be a business owner and didn't really want to go in and, and start new. Coming from where I was before, LPL was much more hands-off in terms of letting you do what you want to do, letting you run your practice, how you want to run your practice. So they had a lot of different departments, um, a lot of different uh, ways you could kind of access their resources, but they were just letting you kind of come to them. So that was appealing to me because I left um, a broker dealer that had proprietary products and uh, was much more involved in your practice, which was great was when I started as an advisor, but as I grew and wanted more independence, LPL was a perfect fit. I would say that the values of my practice, some of them are similar to other advisors. So, you know, honesty, integrity, education, you know, all those, I feel like those are kind of, I guess, table stakes at this point. Um, but I would say that for me, maybe like a differentiator would be probably one, my natural curiosity. So um, my curiosity to dig deeper into a client's lives um, and push a little further than, than another advisor. And then also I'm really big on education. I probably credit that to both my parents being teachers. I've been to focus pretty much every year. Um, and obviously this is the second year where it's virtual. I'm really big on education and uh, kind of forcing time um, to work you know, on the business and um, you know, getting all that continuing education. So I think LPL has done a great job and I'm joining this year um, as well. I would say the favorite part of my job is that qualitative part. Um, really having the time to dig deep and ask questions that maybe 
no one else has asked them, probably even their spouse hasn't asked them. Um, you know, talking about what is your, uh, what were your, your parents' money habits? Um, what brings you joy? Um, you know, all those, all those types of questions that, you know, we all lead busy lives and we don't have time to just kind of sit down and, and ponder these big concepts. So it's fun for me to learn about them in that way. And then it's also fun for me uh, to see spouses learn something new about each other and have kind of that aha moment. Um, so it's, and then having that third person direct it so that they're able to kind of speak freely and, and you know, not worry about um, what the other person thinks. I've been involved with the diversity and inclusion group for probably about a year now um, with the, the Hispanic and Latino group and the Pride Advisors Council. The joy of being an independent advisor is you, um, you know, can do whatever you want, but sometimes it feels like you're on an island a little bit. So being a part of those groups um, kind of has that, you know, you can get a friendly face, um, reach out to someone across the country, um, and you know, share best practices. Keep an open mind because if I had kept to the limits that I had set for myself initially about, you probably don't want to be a business owner, you probably don't want to go into sales. If I had kept to those limits, I never would have been where I am today. So you'll eventually figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, but let yourself figure that out naturally. Don't set those limits on yourself in the beginning. You'll figure it out and um, then you won't limit what you're capable of.